What is up my people, my name's Anton and welcome back to September. Today is a little bit of a rogue one. I don't have a result as such for this video, but I was looking around Arena today, which is where I get a load of my references and ideas from. Um, and I saw this interesting concept of almost like projecting light onto a landscape. Um, and since I'd done videos yesterday, sort of talking about light projection a little bit, and I'd done some videos on timing lights, I figured I'd sort of bring a few of those concepts together to try and recreate this. Um, the reason this also worked quite well is because I have a little project I was working on earlier today with a canyon, um, which looks pretty cool. So this is kind of like an overview of it. Uh, we've got scene one here. I might need to knock down the resolution a little bit, um, but it looks pretty pretty cool consolidated as a landscape as far as sort of the bounds of Octane let me at the moment. Um, and I thought it would be pretty cool to try to project something sick here. Um, and maybe you can watch my workflow as I do it. So... Just before we get started, um, I'll sort of just like run through my workflow, the way I'm thinking of doing it. Um, it'll be using probably like an octane light, similar to what I did yesterday, literally plugging in a projection texture, um, except we don't want it tiled this time if that's possible. We'll just have one sort of image or animation um, plastered on, and then we want to plaster that here. So across quite a wide area, and we're hoping the, the polygons and everything work well, hoping no problems because this scene now has been causing me a few issues recently. Um, but we'll try to figure it out and if it doesn't composite then we'll see what we can do but that is sort of my workflow around it um, for now I'm going to knock down the resolution a little bit because we're working pretty high and the renders are taking some time so I'm going to create a control Z that make sure I'm locking the ratio and just dividing this by two so that if I unlock this and relock it again we can get some kind of quicker quicker snappier viewport times um, and what I'm going to do is I've actually already sourced what I want to sort of try and project. So here we've got this sort of like grid, which works quite well. We are going to have to hop into After Effects for this, by the way. Um, but in mine, what I want to do is I actually have some Ezra Cohen tour visuals. Um, these are really cool. I kind of recommend these. These are a cool source for sort of like alpha, um, sort of like animations and stuff. Obviously, you can tell by the name they're built for like tour visuals and stuff like that. Um, but you've got some cool, I'm going to click on these because my computer's taking a while to load. But you've got some cool like faces which sort of like animate. Um, that was one that I had in mind particularly on this, just creatively, you know, something cool. Um, there are also some, oh, so you've got like star fields and stuff. So you can imagine if you plug this into like an emissive map and actually get it to shine, like super cool concept, right? Um, let's take a look here. I think there was a, there was one which had a grid. Similar to this, but not quite. More like, is things way weld? Something like that, which would be pretty sick. Um, similar I did to the last one, but when this loads, I just want to take a quick overview of my file explorer and hopefully we can see um, some of these. We've got some alphabet ones, which I've used before, which is sort of like gritty, randomy. Um, maybe we can take a look at something which works quite well. So I kind of, I wanted the idea of the, um, of the happy face. Maybe, maybe we could go for like a sad face. Sad face, make it a little depressive. We've got some grids here too. Um, but I, the only reason I'm wearing so I want, I want the mismatch to be quite clear, right? And this gets quite thin, which means we probably lack a little bit of detail. So let's give this a shot. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop into tour. I'm wondering here. Um, so you could do this two ways, really. Um, if you're wanting to time this and really animate it and you're using it in animation, uh, you could do the After Effects route, and this is I've launched this because this was sort of my go-to my go-to um, option. But if you were to drag this footage in and then literally render it as an EXR file, like I mentioned in timing, make sure your timeline here is matched with that. Um, you would essentially, when you import it all, have an animation being projected onto here. Um, for now, I'm inclined to sort of not do that because it would take a while. Um, I don't have a lot of time today and I kind of want to just show a proof of concept more than um, creating a sort of like finished animation, although that would look really cool uh, and it'll be a great little thing for my motion reel. So instead of opening After Effects, I'm going to hope my PC can handle this. I'm going to quickly shut that down and go for um, Photoshop instead. So if I... This would be a cool way of sort of like... Um, segueing from what I explained yesterday um, with the sort of like Gobo maps and stuff like that, the JPEGs, literally 4, 4K JPEGs, um, how you can import that and get it projected um, in a less sort of like realism, you know, interior design, arc viz focused way. 
um, and hopefully it looks cool. If it doesn't look cool, that'll be soul destroying, but we will find out soon. I do prefer sort of recording these videos with an idea at the start, which I can sort of like work towards because it always seems to write people in a little more. But bear with me. I have my ways and maybe we can make something sick. So let's go in here, creative. Uh, I'm going to make sure this is 4096 by 4096 again because that seemed to work pretty good last time. Um, if we take our background, unlock that and hit control I just to invert it straight away, we want white on black. So we have two ways of doing this. I'm inclined to sort of just take the easy route here, um, make this full screen, hit my print screen button on a frame that looks good. It's so maybe something like this. Screenshot that. <laughs> Copy. I'm um, hoping my screen recorder got that and we can literally paste it in pretty easily. Um, let me see what we can do here. So let's remove the black straight away. We can just select that, select that. Um, and now we have just the face so we can center this and center it up nicely. Um, let's make it a little bigger. Maybe something like this. Looks pretty good, looks sharp. This is what we want. Um, let's add a tiny amount of Gaussian blur to it so that it's not completely sharp, you know, like as if it's getting projected from somewhere. It needs a little bit of softness to it. So let's give that a shot. Um, if we hit File, Export, let's save it as a JPEG like last time, just for the sake of continuity. We can head to JPEG here and do Face Projection. Um, make sure we know where we're saving that, but I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure we'll be fine. I'm just going to save that. Um, mats will be will be fine. I'm, I'm guessing. Let's save that there, and let's now hop into Cinema 4D. And I'm hoping that's the right way to actually save these. Uh, and let's give this a shot now. So if we zoom into this a little bit, uh, let's generate our octane area light. Oh, we, we actually already have one just here that I just created earlier. But for me, for the sake of it, we're just gonna make another one. Just so it doesn't look like I've done any dodgy that I'm trying to hide. We can now move this up. Um, and we kind of want to rotate it sort of facing down straight away, I'm guessing. So if we try that, if we go for, um, minus 90, that's, that's the right way. Now I'm aware this scene looks pretty cool, but for the, for the sake of snappiness, so I know that I'm doing the right thing. I'm gonna try hide some of these elements um, and maybe put it on a bit more boring sort of back plate at first. So we take away those canyons. If you guys wanted a tutorial on how to make those canyons, that's something else I sort of found out today. So I will show you how to do that. Um, we can take away this landscape and this one just here because I believe uh, we can get rid of the octane scatter too. I believe that this one is pretty normal. Perfect, so that's what we wanted. Um, now, we can hop in here and take a look at what we want our projection to look like. So this is a pretty good idea of the space that light is hitting. If we move it up, it's going to start going pretty crazy. But let's take a look here. Let's scale this up um, a little more. So we're getting that. And that should give us a pretty cool idea of where our light is going. Um, I know I just said that twice. But if we head into distribution now, if we load up c 4 Octane Image Texture, head in here and find where our face was. So this is just white on black, as I said, but presumably if we can write down the project search path. Okay, it's done something, which is cool. Um, let's take a look at fixing this. So if we get a projection node, we can use that later. Untick surface brightness for now. Actually, maybe let's keep that on so we can actually see what we're doing. Um, we can add into the projection tab here, make sure we're setting that to XYZ by UVW. Um, let's see, because what I'm aware of is it's probably going to scale our light. So we scale it up, that's what we'd get. And if we turn our details down, like we normally would, the light disappears a little bit. So if we So we're getting, we are getting our sad face there. You can sort of start to see. If we hop out the camera real quick, let's take a look. We are getting it, and it's to do with our fall off, presumably. Let's take a look in here and see how the scale affects it. So that is that is more like it, except it's quite 
um, quite soft. So I think we have a few ways to fix it. See, moving it down is not going to be the right shout. Let's move that back up a little bit. Take a look here. And um, we want to make this sharper now. So if we untick surface brightness, you see we get a bit of a, but that's not the issue that we want. We want to, well, and this is where we need to start thinking a little bit. So normally, if you head into Octane here and sort of turn down this light, so we're getting some sharpness there. Let's, there we go. So you need to make sure your untick surface brightness and then scale it down. And ideally, our projection map should become pretty sharp. So if we were now to move this, we are getting some light here around the edges. And I'm sure there is a setting in here which fixes that. But we're getting we're getting some slight warping. Let's see if we can change this to maybe perspective. So that okay, that's that's changing the warping, which is nice. Um, if we that's going to change our transform. Let's take a look at this real quick because, okay, so that's going to, hmm, for some reason when we lock that, it doesn't work. This is the reason I kind of like doing these videos raw because if I have an issue and you guys are like, well, why is my scale not working? You can sort of look at me and be like, oh, it doesn't work for me though. It's just an octane, octane thing. Um, let's get that to 222, two, two, maybe 333. Three, three. Uh, so it's, I think it's that last one. Ah, okay, 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 okay. So it's this scale that you want to adjust in perspective. I'm sure where that is. So we can rotate this too, if we wanted to. We can rotate it a little bit like that. It was a little bit of creative control. Um, and that is kind of what I had in mind, although this is pretty, let's brighten this up a little bit. Let's set this more like 500. Um, we do have these bits around the edges and let's take a look into how we can potentially get rid of these. Test projection perspective. Um, bum, 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 bum. My other idea for a solution to this is actually just to scale down the face in the black because that's going to change how it tiles, right? So if we were to move that down to maybe something like this um, and then re export this, let's see how this changes. Um, the result. So if I go face proj two, um, just a quick explanation sort of like how how I came to that idea. Um, obviously the way C4D is sort of interpreting this image is it taking it and it's sort of like tiling out tiling it tiling it out um, in a space because typically when you're using lights that's kind of the result that you want. You want to create more even cover and that's what it's doing here. Um, if you saw the scale that I had on the face before, it was larger, right? So if you imagine loads of these canvases all around each other, the edges of the face will be closer to each other because they're, they're closer to the edge of the canvas. Now that we've shortened that, what I'm thinking is that if we head in here and literally drag in our smaller face, there's gonna be more of a gap there because it's still like on black. It's not a alpha and it's not adapting. And just like that, we're getting some more space in between our, between our faces. So now if we wanted to hop in here and let's go about scaling this up, maybe more to something like that. That's kind of what I had in mind. Um, bear in mind, this is gonna be quite a large space, the way that I've structured this, so it should look pretty cool. Um, here we can't even see the sad face, nor can we here. So let's take a look at really quickly enabling our landscape, make sure we're saving up because geometry is always a pain. Let's re-enable that, that looks pretty cool. Um, I think this is what else we had to enable. So I've got two landscapes here which sort of intersect each other because one's dust and the other one's rock. Um, hard to explain, but it's sort of the way that I ended up modeling this scene. Um, we've got some landscapes there which don't need to be in here. Unsure what that is. Um, oh, we need the octane scatter enabled. Let's take a look at that. So it's gonna be projecting over the, over the plants, which is pretty cool. Take one more look. So our scene is composited. Let's hop over here, see if we can tweak this to make it look a little bit cooler. So the light is definitely projecting, which looks sick. Um, if we wanted to, I think we should move this camera up a little bit so that we can see it a little more. We can turn this down, something more like that. 
and getting, I think that, that degree there is pretty perfect. Um, and if you were to let this render, I think we'd be getting a pretty, pretty cool, accurate result there. Um, you wouldn't even need to render the EXR sequence for animating uh, in this case, because I think you have a control here. You could keyframe this rotation um, and literally have that face rotate as you wanted to. So that is a pretty cool, um, pretty cool way of doing things. If you wanted to tweak this anymore, you haven't even got into the power and temperature settings yet. So if you wanted to make this more of like a cooler sort of UFO light, you could turn that up and it'll go a little bit bluer, hard to see. Um, I feel like a lot of the details on this would shine when you give it a full render, because even when you look around here, um, or if we wanted to turn the resolution back up, I hopped in here and she went multiplied by two, unlocked and relocked it. Uh, we start to get some pretty cool details where that light was shining. Um, and I feel like it would actually generate a pretty cool look. Um, in this space here in particular, it's in like a really dark spot. And I, I, if I was to render this out, I'd up the shadows a little bit. Um, but we've got a cool octane daylight, which is sort of shining around the edges. We could change that too. So if we went to down here and just sort of, you know, rotated this around maybe a little bit to get a little more of that sunlight shining or rather the other direction. We could start to mix in some of that projected light with the sunlight. And that is where a lot of your lighting sources will sort of combine to look pretty cool. We could also make it warmer, like I said. Um, which, would look, which would also look pretty cool. Uh, you could head back here, just have it, I don't know, kind of there. We could implement it with loads of other stuff, but that is kind of what I wanted to get at today. Um, sorry for like the slight, slightly hectic setup here, um, but I saw that post and thought it would be a really cool thing to try and recreate. And I'm hoping I did it in a pretty cool way. Um, obviously, again, like loads of things that I showed, this is sort of more of like a proof of concept video. Um, if you wanted to change it, you could plug anything you wanted into here, um, animate it around how you wanted to, turn the brightness down maybe because it's obviously crazy high. Um, you could have this subtle, you could have this super strong, you could have it green, you could have it whatever color you wanted to. Um, in fact, I think we probably could do that if we, if we head to texture and just plug in C for the octane and then head to all RGB spectrum, I believe. And we wanted this to be literally a green projection like we saw. You could turn that down and then you're getting a green projection and it is literally that easy. Um, that is something specific, for example, like RGB spectrum. I didn't know that existed, but you know, as you learn, you sort of like go along, you find out these things exist and you can just t like change the color of anything super easily. Um, so with that being said, thank you for watching. I understand that was hectic and totally out of the blue, but um, I'm hoping I sort of like taught you guys something about projecting light, um, just how easy it is. I don't see enough people doing it. It's really sick, not just an octane, but in Redshift too. Redshift more than octane um, because of, you know, layering materials and sort of like putting light in specific areas. It's crazy. I need to delve far more into Redshift because I know octane pretty well. Um, but Redshift and Houdini are on my checklist of things to really go get out there and bring back to everyone. So um, thank you for watching, everyone that's stuck this long. Um, I appreciate every one of you. And I will see you very soon with some new, hopefully more consolidated content. Um, I want to start uploading more sort of like projects from start to finish, if that makes sense. Um, I've seen a lot of stuff that Cornelius Damrish, um, Zomax has been doing, which is, I think, is really cool. One of my biggest inspirations in the 3D artist. Um, industry i guess uh 3d artists in general um i think his sort of workflow and the way he does things is super cool and i'd love to replicate that in a cool way um he's incredibly creative and i respect that and not just him but loads of other people um i kind of want to bring out what i felt like i lacked um in terms of information when i was learning um and sort of you know break boundaries a little bit right because we're not here to follow the rules and with that being said i started my outro but i didn't quite finish it thank you everyone for watching i'll see you very soon in the next video. Thank you.